So, first of all, good morning and welcome to Ending Age-Related Disease, the first conference we at LEAF have hosted here at the storied Cooper Union to support the critical work of overcoming the diseases and disabilities of aging. And thank you all for being part of it. Many of you I know, some of you quite well, and I'm very glad that we've reached a level of support ourselves where we can provide this platform here for you today in New York uh, to share your incredibly important work, which itself is part of one of our long-term goals to make support for the development of this research truly bi-coastal here in America and a global priority. I'd like to quickly thank our heroes who support us at lifespan.io slash hero for helping to make this event possible, some of whom are here today, and of course our event sponsors. The SENS Research Foundation I'm sure needs no introduction, being a leading pioneer in this field for many years in regards to both advocacy and research into overcoming the root causes of aging. Paul Spiegel of Eclectic Law, who has been serving the life sciences community for many years by providing legal counsel, and who also serves quite admirably on our board, so thank you, Paul. Icor Therapeutics, a dedicated research organization which performs contract lab work and is pursuing multiple of its own projects, such as therapies to address age-related macular degeneration and diseases caused by the accumulation of senescent cells, also based in New York, so represent Kelsey. Age Shapers, a Canada-based advocacy organization supporting research for healthy life extension and that is filming on site for a documentary. So if perhaps you'd like to be a part of that, keep an eye out for Lloyd, wherever he may be. And speakers, after you're done, if you talk to Rebecca on the aisle, she'll guide you down to the press room. And finally, the Methuselah Foundation, one of the first organizations to work expressly on extending healthy human lifespan, and which supports promising biotechnology companies that are pushing the boundaries of medical science towards a new age of healthy longevity, aiming to make 90 the new 50 by 2030. And I'd also like to thank our board here at LEAF and all of our dedicated volunteers, including those here, without whom I probably wouldn't be able to survive uh, another day, let alone any significant lifespan, healthily extended or otherwise. So, we find ourselves at an interesting and exciting time in the development of our field of overcoming the diseases of aging. A dream of humanity since the birth of civilization and probably even before that. And while there has been research into the causes of aging for quite some time, it's only very recently that the endeavor is beginning to bear tangible fruit. The circle is beginning to tighten on our understanding of just what it is that changes in us as we age. And this has given us targets that we can pursue for medical intervention. This in turn gives birth to companies to pursue these interventions and an emerging field takes shape. I think it is safe to say that the world has started to notice. Interest and support has been growing among institutional investors like Jim Mellon, as well as from leaders in adjacent fields like computer science and cryptocurrency, such as Vitalik Buterin over here of Ethereum fame, who generously donated millions to SENS just a few months ago. And in general, investment in biotech is rising, which includes life sciences. A notable example here being Unity, which raised over $200 million and only weeks ago announced it is moving forward with human clinical trials designed to eliminate senescent cells associated with age-related disease. Furthermore, even in today's challenging political environment, funding is currently set to increase for the NIH, also very recent news, and at the state level, initiatives are springing up as well to support life sciences development, such as the LifeSci NYC initiative here in New York, which is allocating $500 million to help grow the industry, and representatives of which I believe are here today. So we are at a turning of the tide, yes, but that doesn't mean we should take it for granted. Every day, 150,000 people die, approximately two-thirds of which is due to age-related causes. 100,000 people every day, many of whom would prefer the choice to not have it be so, or at least to not have a protracted period of decline which causes untold suffering for them and those that care for them. Curing age-related disease is not just ethical at the personal family level, but on a societal economic level as well. In their 2017 report, the UN here, 
uh, projects that 13% of the global population is aged 60 or above, with this percentage set to increase rapidly in the coming years. You can already see the difference in the population pyramid, as it was called, uh, from 1950 until now. It's no longer much of a pyramid at all. And it's clear to see how this demographic shift jeopardizes social safety net programs like Medicare and Social Security, because there are less healthy people of working age, proportionally, to support the elderly. This problem has already come to a devastating head in places like Japan, where more adult diapers are being sold than those for babies. And the government has enacted programs to incentivize the birth of more children to compensate the so-called gray tsunami. It is fair to say that Japan has some unique cultural factors that compound this issue, but in a very real sense, they are the canary in the coal mine here. We have to solve this problem, and quickly, for the economic sustainability of the world. One of the greatest bottlenecks to do this is simply funding, and we at LEAF are trying to do our part by helping to create a bridge through all aspects of therapy development. As many of you already know, we're supporting early stage research via our crowdfunding platform, Lifespan.io, where to date we've raised over a quarter million dollars to support six scientific studies in three important areas, mitochondrial damage, senescent cell accumulation, and telomere mechanisms in cancer, with more projects on the way later this year. And more recently, we've begun a longevity research-focused investor network where we orchestrate pitches from promising startups in the field with angel investors, seeking to help fund the next part of the journey after basic research. So if you're looking to be a part of this on either side of that coin, do let us know. And relatedly, we've also begun managing a rejuvenation roadmap at lifespan.io slash roadmap to keep track of research progress and give the general public a sense of where we are in terms of overcoming age-related disease. These initiatives are, of course, in addition to our ongoing efforts to inform and engage the public via our blog, which I'm sure you all read, and social media, such as our journal club on Facebook, where we go through longevity research papers live. So here is, for example, Oliver walking thousands of people live through the paper on the hallmarks of aging. But we are just one part of a growing ecosystem, which is in turn part of an increasingly interconnected world. And thus, it is important to be aware of how our field relates to current and ongoing societal issues. For example, there is a great debate now about issues such as income inequality and universal health care, and this creates opportunities to illustrate how wiser allocation of medical funding and researching the root causes of aging can positively impact issues such as these. And also sometimes cultural moments might arise that are opportunities to engage a broadening sphere of the public in our work. Uh, for example, any Marvel fans in the house may have no doubt noticed that the plot of Infinity War, one of the most successful movies of all time, centered on common misconceptions about population growth that are related to knee-jerk criticisms that people might have about extending healthy human lifespan. So this was a teachable moment of sorts that allowed us to engage 40,000 people and counting with the video we created. As another example, this article appeared just a few days ago on the front page of Medium, and a, a lot of people were angry about it, saying it conflates legitimate research with pseudoscience and depicts investment in longevity research as opposed to healthcare reform instead of being part of it. So instead of anger, I reached out to the author to see if we can have a conversation, and she accepted. So who knows? Maybe uh, the fruit that will be born from that will be a better article that more accurately represents our field to the public. It's an opportunity. Now, obviously the work itself is important, but growing the field as fast as possible may mean that there are times like this where we can and should step outside of the lab or the office and engage the public to be communicators as well as scientists and investors. As you can see, we try to practice what we preach. Our board members discussing these ideas on TED, on Fox and Russian News, no collusion, and YouTube. <laughs> One case of this worth mentioning is the work we did with the YouTube science channel Kurzgesagt to produce two videos about the research and ethics of life extension. I'm assuming some of you may have watched this considering they've been viewed collectively 7.5 million times and became top trending videos for all of YouTube on the days of their release. 
Not only does this serve the primary purpose of educating the public at large, it also had a massive secondary effect of bringing in thousands of newcomers into our community, including large donors, investors, researchers. Even almost a year later, I still get emails from uh, PhDs and investors saying that they hadn't realized the progress that's being made in the field and now want to change their focus. So this is important. And of course, that's in addition to countless emails from people who have elderly family members or who work in assisted living homes who know better than anyone that we can do better as a society when it comes to aging and want to do something about it. The good news here is that as this public support grows, we also collectively gain the power to influence policy uh, that can affect our field. For example, earlier this year, we were part of a broad coalition that successfully convinced the World Health Organization to amend their latest program of work, as it's called, to prioritize aging and age-related disease, which was initially absent. And just a few days ago, they accepted a proposal from the International Longevity Alliance and the Biogerontology Research Foundation to add a better classification for age-related diseases to the ICD-11, or the International Classification of Diseases, which could in turn open up paths for governmental funding of this research and is something uh, community members have been essentially lobbying for for a very, very long time. So everything is connected. This graph, as some of you may know, is sometimes used to represent the idea of bootstrapping medical technologies to overcome the, the curve of aging, but I like it for a different reason, and how it can represent the growth of a burgeoning field itself reaching the mainstream. For those of us who've been in the field for a while now and have seen it change, it may seem like it's the, the middle of the wave right now, and in some sense, uh, perhaps it is. But in the larger scope of things, we're actually more towards the beginning here, the red or the brown dot. Uh, and as such, that's actually very exciting because everything we do now can have a massive impact as together we provide the activation energy, so to speak, for this new field to grow that has the power to positively affect everyone on the earth. I'm reminded again of the statistic mentioned earlier that 100,000 people die every day of the diseases of aging, and another way to think about that. Every second, someone dies of age-related disease. One second, one life. Think about that for a second. And what a powerful way that is to overcome our cognitive bias of scope neglect, to see beyond the faceless statistics and understand just what it is we're working for, who we're working for. And rather than being depressing, this realization can be a great motivator, not just to those of us in this room, but to everyone. Because if you care about this issue and the collective effect of whatever it is you do is to simply move the needle up on the fruition of this research by one second, you will have saved someone from age-related disease. Imagine the effect we can have if we all move the needle in this way. It is my hope that by taking the world on our shoulders together in this sense, we can lift it to a place free of the diseases of aging. So whether you're bringing money and attention to this field by investing or donating, spreading the word in the press or social media, or at your dinner table, or by doing the research itself, you're helping to improve and ultimately save the lives of countless people. We can all be proud of that, but there is still much work to be done, so let us do it together. Thank you.